Hi, David Burkett here, the convener of SNP Peterhead. A couple of weeks ago we posted about the disgraceful sacking at P&O Ferries and as the video started to do the rounds on the internet, someone who's obviously not an SNP fan said the SNP are in no position to lecture anyone in ferries. And rather predictably, both Douglas Ross and Anna Sauer also led with this issue at First Minister's Questions this week just as they have for the past two weeks and probably well next week. The Liberal Democrats have mentioned it for time to time, but only when they're allowed to speak. But if you were to believe our opposition and the mainstream media, you'd think we'd run a mile for this issue, with our tails between our legs. But you'd be wrong. You'd be way wrong. There's been a lot said about the ferries being built at Ferguson Shipyard, being late and being over budget, and Despite being a loyal party member, I have to confess, this is not our finest hour. We can and we must do better. No one likes paying over the odds for anything, and even I'm the best pleased about the price of them ferries. But the picture our opposition and the mainstream media try to paint of shambolic Scottish government procurement is actually a falsehood. Because by and large, SNP-led Scottish government procurement, particularly on transport infrastructure is actually quite good value. Let's look at some of the other big ticket items Scottish Government have shelled out for and the price paid. The Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, or EWPR, was a project to build a bypass road around the city of Aberdeen. The contract price was £745 million. An additional £64 million was paid to offset delays, meaning the total paid was £809 million. Now initially that looks like we got stung a wee bit, but the project actually cost the building consortium over £1 billion. Now, I worked on that project and even at the early stages before any delays came up, the word around the site was that they'd never build this route for 745 million quid, and they were right. Added to which, the project resulted in greater than expected environmental benefits to the city of Aberdeen. Initial projections were that it would reduce HGV traffic passing through the city centre by 29-35%. to 35%. However, it's actually been reduced by 49%. So thanks to SNP-led Scottish Government procurement, we got a £1 billion road with greater than expected environmental benefits for a bargain price. Look at the Queen's Ferry Crossing. A new road bridge across the Forth was one of the first really big infrastructure projects taken on by an SNP-led Scottish Government. Now the project didn't have a fixed contract price due to its complexity and high potential for complications. A budget of almost £1.6 billion was set aside, but the bridge was actually delivered for £1.355 billion. So thanks to the SNP-led Scottish Government procurement we got back £245 million pounds into the public purse, along with our new bridge. So these two projects alone have cost the top Scottish taxpayer £436 million pounds less than they should have, thanks to SNP-led Scottish Government procurement. Now compare this to the first big infrastructure project undertaken by the Labour Liberal Democrat Coalition during the first two terms of the Scottish Government, the Edinburgh Trams. Now this project was first promoted by the Labour Lib Dem coalition who served the first two terms of the Scottish Government. The future of the scheme came under threat in 2007 when the SNP manifesto made clear our intention to cancel the scheme. However, as the newly elected SNP-led Scottish Government was a minority government, we were defeated in Parliament and therefore forced to agree to continue with the project. The original estimated cost was £498 million, £375 million of which was to be supplied by the Scottish Government. By the time the contracts were awarded this had been raised to £512 million. When the trams started service in 2014 the actual cost had exceeded £776 million. Now this was despite the scale of the project being vastly reduced to rein in spiralling costs. And of course, we can't talk about government infrastructure procurement without mentioning the UK government's HS2 project. 
This follows a very similar, though admittedly way, way more costly pattern to the Edinburgh Trams project. First muted in the early days of the Conservative Lib Dem coalition at Westminster, early estimates of 30.9 billion were soon increased to 56.6 billion in 2015. A review in 2019 estimated costs would be between 80.7 billion and 106 billion pounds at 2019 prices. Now I said 2019 prices as they don't expect phase one to be ready until 2033. So that price is only going to go one way and that's up. And of course, despite the rising costs, the originally planned scale of the project has already been drastically reduced particularly and rather predictably in terms of provision to the north. But the mother of all UK government procurement mistakes was the Covid PPE scandal. The UK government spent a lot of money on PPE during the Covid pandemic. In the first year of the pandemic some £12.1 billion was spent on PPE. Now, In the UK government's own words 0.67 billion was spent on PPE which cannot be used for instance because it is defective. 2.6 billion was spent on PPE which is not suitable for use within the health and social care sector. 0.75 billion was spent on PPE which is in excess of the amount that was ultimately needed. 4.7 billion was spent as an adjustment as the market price of equivalent PPE is now lower and the original purchase price. All this totals a staggering £8.7 billion pounds out of the 12.1 that was spent on PPE being wasted. Much of this PPE was bought under the so-called Fast Track VIP lane where companies with links to Tory ministers were handed lucrative contracts with limited checks. As an example, the government bought 25 million medical gowns for £122 million from PPE Medpro, a company linked to Tory peer Baroness Michelle Moon. PPE Medpro originally purchased the gowns from a Chinese manufacturer for just £46 million. They were never used by the NHS after government officials rejected them following an inspection. So PPE Medpro have pocketed £76 million for useless PPE. And they're not alone. And as a result of this rampant cronyism, Department of Health chiefs said that they were planning to dispose of 15,000 pallets of equipment a month for the next year by burning it as fuel to generate electricity. That's 576 lorry loads a month destined for an incinerator, chipping away at the 5.5 billion pieces of useless equipment currently sitting in government stockpiles. So yes, getting back to the ferries, I would concede that there are lessons for the Scottish Government to learn following the vessels being delivered, and those lessons won't make for nice reading. But taken as a whole, the SNP-led Scottish Government infrastructure procurement is performing well. It's offering good value to the taxpayer. Compare that to the Edinburgh trams, HS2 and the £8.7 billion just spaffed up the wall by our opposition, and you'll see that the Tories, Labour and Lib Dems are in no position to lecture us on procurement best practice. Our ferries may well be late, they may well be expensive, but they will be delivered and they will be used for their intended purpose. Unlike the 5.5 billion pieces of useless and overpriced PPE, much of it being plastic, that have already been transported halfway around the world from China is now in stockpiles and the only utility the UK government can gain from it is to incinerate it all for fuel in the middle of a climate emergency. The SNP-led Scottish Government will learn and apply the lessons from our procurement mistakes, but will the Tory-led UK government even attempt to do the same? I hope so, but I suspect that as long as some of that misspent public money is finding its way into the friends and donors private pocket, that nothing will change. And sadly, my friends, the only way to change that situation is to make sure that your government isn't led by Tories. Cheers.